Hey guys, what's up? My name's Grant Borland, and today I want to talk about my five favorite plugins for sound design at the moment. I've been recently writing an album with a buddy of mine, uh, doing like horror music, and for this album we wanted to record a lot of our own original sounds and then like further process those, so we just brought something very unique to the table when the time comes to start like pitching it to different publishers and whatnot. So, you know, doing this work throughout the week, it got me thinking about, you know, what are some of my favorite plugins to do sound design with. At the moment, I came up with a list of about five plugins that I feel like I'm using all the time in one way or another. And I kind of wanted to share those with you guys. I wanted to tell you, you know, why I like these so much and why they keep coming up when I'm designing sounds. So the thing with sound design is I feel like it's a very, you know, it's a very creative thing. So like my, my favorites are going to be totally different and the things the reasons I like these plugins are, are probably going to be completely different from the reasons why you might like these plugins. I think that's how you get your own unique sound anyways. So uh, right off the bat, the five plugins that I like to use the most right now for sound design are uh, number one, the Ebon Tides Black Hole Reverb. I think that thing sounds incredible. I've been using this reverb for a long time now and uh, it's a really musical and creative tool. Like there's a lot of reverbs out there that sound more natural, like rooms and halls and stuff that sound very like authentic. I feel like the black hole is a type of reverb that's like more creative. Like there's like this modulated tail at the end of everything that sounds really unique and I like throwing it on like pads and pianos and stuff like that um, just if I want to do something a little bit more like creative and unique. So that's that's my favorite reverb for sound design. Secondly would be Outputs Thermal. Outputs Thermal is like I guess in essence like a distortion and saturation plugin but I feel like there's all these different parameters in it where you can do some like really wild out there like glitchy effects and stuff like it's not just a straightforward distortion saturation plugin there's there's a lot um, in that plugin and honestly you could probably make a whole video on that plugin but that's one I've been using a lot as well the third one I love using a lot is the wave sound shifter it's like a pitch shifter plugin really simple straightforward but I think that's why I like it so much and I'm drawn to it, towards it. Logic has a pitch shifting plugin, which is great too, and I use that from time to time. But I kind of feel like the Waves one is just a little bit more like straightforward. Maybe, f I don't know, four or five controls at most. And it's just very, very easy to use. You just slap it on there and I know exactly what I'm doing. I just quickly pitch things as needed. And it's uh, pretty easy for me to automate too if I need to. The next one is going to be Sound Toys uh, Tremolator. It's like a tremolo plugin, or you can make cool pulses with it. But I feel like it's just a little bit more in depth, and there's a little bit more to it than other tremolators I've used. Actually, the whole Sound Toys bundle could be in this video, but for the sake of time and everything, I'm just going to focus on the tremolator. But definitely check out the whole Sound Toys bundle if you're looking for unique sound design tools because everything in that whole plugin bundle could very well be an insanely useful for you. The final one I want to talk about is a plugin called Endless Smile by Data Life, Data Life, something like that. This is one I used a lot, um, especially when making like risers and things like that. I think it's just a really unique plugin. Like I put out a sample pack, I think last year called Escalate, and it was like 40 different hybrid trailer risers. And Endless Smile was like a very, very useful tool throughout that whole project and process. You know, I feel like it's just really good at like hyping things up, making things sound like they're ramping up. And when I was making risers, a lot of times I would automate this like intensity knob on it. I think that's what they refer to it as. But like on top of my risers, like rising in pitch, like I feel like Endless Smile was like that secret sauce, if you will, that really kind of pushed my risers over the edge. So that's a tool I've been using a lot as well for uh, for sound design. So those are my five favorites right there. Earlier this week, I went ahead and I recorded samples for my violin. I just set up my microphone and did like a, a session recording just all sorts of sounds I could grab out of my violin from plucks to scrapes to um, you know, like risers, you know, like just accelerating in tone and all those types of things. I actually used my uh, Soundstone Ebo as well. It's like a sustainer. I used that on my violin to create some drones. I just did a bunch of unique stuff. And so basically in today's video, what I want to do is I want to take a few of those recordings and I want to apply these five favorite plugins of mine to them and see if I can't make something like pretty unique out of it. Just to kind of show you you know, how I would use these plugins and um, why I think that they're so great. So 
without further ado, let's just jump into Logic and start playing around. I mean, honestly, it's a very creative process, and I don't know what to expect, but I feel like if I just start goofing around with these plugins, we're going to get something like totally different that you probably would never expect came from a violin in the first place, which I feel is really cool anyways. So anyways, let's jump into it right now and uh, see what we can make. All right, so here are my five samples. Uh, I've got a pluck, a riser. Uh, I've labeled this as spiccato, but really it's more of just like a string effect. I've got a drone I made from that Ebo, and then I've got more uh, violin effects too. So let me just show you kind of what each one of these sounds like. You know, just a basic pluck, nothing too crazy. This riser is kind of cool. I stacked like nine or ten layers of um, me playing risers, and I got this really like scary sounding string riser. This string effect, uh, it's not a spiccato, but. Weird, creepy, squeak, I don't know. Thought it'd be kind of cool, so I included that. And then I've got this uh, Ebo drone, which is kind of cool too. Like, I think that'll be cool. You hear, you hear the buzzing of like the Ebo actually hitting the string so you get that like buzzing sound but then it like kind of shies away from the ebo and you just hear that ringing that uh the ebo is supposed to do i kind of thought it was cool having those like uh mistakes or those buzzing imperfections in there i think that'll uh, be good to make a drone sound a little bit more textural it's not just a solid note just repeating there's a little bit of like i don't know if evolving is the term but there's something that just makes it a little bit different than other drones and pads. Um, and then finally we have just this like crazy violin effect kind of thing. Um, that sounds pretty terrifying too. There you have it. Those are the five samples I recorded with my violin. And I just want to see if I can't make something kind of cool out of it. So let's just start with the pluck real quick. Um, I'll solo this. There's that pluck sound again. Uh, let's just start playing around with it. Let's start with sound shifter to pitch it down. A little bit of distortion. The thing with thermal is I think they have a lot of good presets to get you started with. Sometimes I feel like the presets are perfect. This plugin is kind of new to me. My buddy James turned me on to it, and uh, I feel like I'm still learning a lot about this plugin. But yeah, there's like these different categories, and then with within each uh, folder category you have all these different presets so we could go with extreme and there's going to be all these lo-fi has its own presets so on and so forth That's cool. Yeah, see, there's all these, it's, it's so much more than just a saturator. You have all these different um, tools to really kind of shape the sound. And then you also have, you know, the uh, main screen too. So you can kind of, you have this X, Y axis sort of thing to kind of blend in uh, these different parameters, which on this is chaos and slime, whatever that means. It's, it's different for every preset. If I just kind of play around with this. Add a little bit of black hole to it. Add a few sound shifters to it though. I kind of want to make this low.
bear with me on this. I'm gonna bounce this in place. But what I wanna do is I wanna flip it. I think I wanna get rid of that little transient thing. black hole again. Kind of like a little whoosh. There you go. That's like a, you know, a very subtle whoosh. Um, but that could be kind of a useful sound effect too. So we'll keep that, but we'll move on. Um, next one, let's play with this riser. First things first, I want to get this out of the violin territory. Let's pitch it down again. I really like pitching stuff down. I think it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know, it's a good starting point. Alright, let's automate this real quick though. Wait. There you go, there's a, a riser from a violin that kind of sounds unique. Now I feel like with this album I'm making, I'll, uh, I'll use some of the dry stuff and then I'll use, or when I say dry, I guess I mean the unprocessed stuff, like I'll use those violins I recorded because I think that'll add a nice organic um, feel to the music I'm writing, but it's also nice to have some really processed sounds too. If you're layering it under some other risers or whooshes or whatever you're making, it's nice to have these kind of options. So, and these sounds I'm making, I'm not necessarily going to keep, but just for the video purpose, I can kind of show you like how cool and fast sound design can be using some of these tools. So we got ourselves a, uh, what was this, a subtle whoosh? Subtle whoosh. And then we got a hybrid riser, kind of unique. Let's move on to this Ebo, because I thought this was kind of cool. I'm gonna actually just chop out some bits from this. What I'm gonna do, yes, let's drag this out a little bit. has got to be low. Couple instances of this. Let's add a little bit of thermal, add a little bit of uh, warmth to it, a little grit. Whoa, that was... 
was cool. Where was that? As soon as that, that little thud comes in. Let's start it there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. cool instead of a drone if that's just kind of like a I don't even know what you'd call that that's just kind of something unique I feel like I would I would definitely have a use for that in place um, so let's hear what we uh, what we came up with our subtle whoosh our hybrid riser Cool, there you have it. There's three samples. All came from the violin, and I think by the end of it, it really sounded nothing like a violin, which was kind of cool. Um, I basically used all five of those plugins. I think on one one instance or one sound I was tweaking, I used the stock Logic EQ. But aside from that, everything else, I was kind of just messing around on the fly. I hope you guys found that kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Those are my five favorite sound design plugins at the moment. Uh, I think they're useful and I kind of wanted to share them with you. So if you're looking for new plugins or new ways to make sounds more unique to, to yourself, I recommend checking all those out. So, all right guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.